Well, this is hauntingly familiar now, isn't it, Lana? I mean, it is for me. It definitely is for me. Okay, we got it. I didn't show up for most of House of Villains season one, all right? I got it. I understand. <laughs> but don't you worry, because I will be sat for this season. I can Ooh. promise you that. Well, maybe I'll take off a lot of season two of House of Villains. I don't think you'll want to, though. That's the problem. <laughs> but hello, 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 and hi, villains. Hello, villain. Welcome to a special edition of The Cup, the currently unnamed podcast, where we put the real and the tea in reality, and you can always come to us first to quench your thirst. I'm Logan Murphy, say something gay. Gay, and I am just drinking not really villainous water, but water nonetheless, because uh, hydration is of the essence. And villains I'm, need to be hydrated. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, hi, I am Lana, your resident evil diva. And I'm here to give the tea, spit the tea, and drink the tea because you yeah, I love me some tea. Her. And if you have some tea, you know what to do. Hit me up. Yep, you know, just drinking water. It's that hydration kind of day. You know, just stay hydrated. Get your water on. But if I drink anything else, I'll be drinking out of my cup mug. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Pan off a lot of cup mugs. Pan off a lot of cup mugs. Beer, 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 beer. And you can get your cup mug or any of our cup merch at lawnagecreations.etsy.com where we do ship domestically here in the United States and in Mexico and Canada. For sure. Anywhere else? There are some excuses. We're working on it, but we'll figure it out and we'll let you know. But, uh, if you can, get your cup merch. Period. Purr, purr, purr. Well, we are here with a very, very special edition of the cup today because out of absolutely nowhere, E decided they were going to drop the cast for season two of House of Villains because it had already been leaked. And hey, you know what? I appreciate shows like House of Villains and like The Traitors for kind of just like owning it and being like, okay, cool, the cast was leaked. Let's just release the cast. So I'm pretty sure they're filming like right now. Yeah, this isn't happening till the fall. We, we yeah. know that for sure. The show is not coming out till the fall, but we're getting the cast leak. We're getting the cast drop now. So, and we couldn't wait to talk about it because I will say personally, I am more excited for this cast than I was the season one cast. And the se- season one turned out phenomenally, and I loved watching it. I did finish watching it, Lana. I will have you know, I did finish it. Not while we were co- actively covering it on the channel, but I did finish it. <laughs> and so I'm excited to see who follows in Miss Tanisha's footsteps. And win season two of House of Villains. I had the opposite reaction. I was oh, more excited. I was more excited about the first season okay. cast than I am about this season's cast. Okay. But um, I'm still excited about the season and what it's going to bring. Hopefully, I want to <laughs> want to see if it matches up to the expectation that I have now for it, since season one was so great to me. I hope season two matches that energy or surpasses it. That'll be great. But as far as the cast, I was more excited about season one's cast than I am about this cast. There's more people on this cast that I'm like, oh, oh, okay. Season one cast, I was like, oh, oh, ah, oh, okay, I don't know that one. Oh, right. Okay, but I don't know that one. I think it was like two or three people I didn't really know from the last cast, but I this one, I'm like, okay, all right. Who they they Who? wide they widened Who? their uh, scope of uh, shows that they were casting from. I do love that we have a few of the same shows, and we'll talk about those shows. We've got a couple different shows represented this season. I will say, I kind of have the opposite. Where season one, I went in. I think I only knew five or six of the people on the cast very very well. This season, I know nine of them. Okay. And or I know eight of them, and I know of the other two. So this this season very much so skews more towards the shows that I watch 
as a whole, as opposed to the ones that you watch. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm excited, nevertheless, to talk about it. So we're going to dive into this cute little cast of villains. Before we do that, make sure to subscribe if you've not already, because we're here almost all the time, giving you almost all things reality TV. And when this cast does drop in the fall, and when this season comes out, we will be here to cover all of it. So don't you worry about that. We've got three other channels as well right now with Almost All Things Drag, Almost All Things Eurovision Song Contest, and Almost All Things Wrestling Recap. So make sure to go check out all of those channels and our membership channel where you can get exclusive content and early access to a lot of our stuff across the Cup channels. Those links are down in the description below. So without further ado, let's dive into this cast, mostly in the order that was released on Entertainment Weekly. Which means, Lana, we have the joy and privilege of starting with Weston Bergman from The Challenge. Wes is going to be interesting on the show. I agree. Um, he's not going to have the same charm and charisma as Johnny Bananas did in season one. He won't have that. I don't see Wes doing as well as Johnny because I think Wes has, unless he comes in with a totally different attitude, which is possible because I said the same thing about Johnny last season. Yeah. I was like, I don't know how Johnny is going to be, but I feel like when you take a challenge person out of the realm of the challenge where they know everybody who's there because they've done – 20 something seasons with these same people. Yeah. When you put them in an environment where they are not the big fish in the small yep. pond and they don't have the cushion of having all of their friends there and making alliances with the people who they know, they have to adjust their game. So I I, I will I will retract a little bit. I don't think Wes is going to be able to be as charismatic as Johnny because I don't think that's just that's what's his character. But what I do think Wes will excel in is the fact that he knows how to schmooze people. He knows how to convince people to work with him. And so it's going to be interesting to see West in a situation or in an environment where he doesn't know everybody and he has to go and start to re to reintroduce himself to people and get people on his side who would know, you know, so that's going to be interesting to see. Is he going to go as far as Johnny? I don't know. Who knows? Right. But I just think it's going to be interesting to see Wes in an, a different environment from the challenge around people with bigger personalities than he is. I absolutely agree with you. I will say, because I'm not the world's biggest Johnny Bananas fan, nor am I the world's biggest Wes Bergman fan. But I will say I found Johnny the most entertaining and the most the easiest to watch on House of Villains. Absolutely. And Absolutely. I, I, I will say that as well for the one episode he was on The Traitors. I found him, you know, fine enough before he went home first. Spoiler. Um, but I'm very interested to see Wes in a non-challenge arena and see what he is able to do in this realm. We did see how, how well Johnny did on season one. I am interested to see if Wes is going to duplicate that or if these villains will recognize, hey, this is kind of Johnny's, like one of Johnny's best friends. He could probably do the same sort of stuff. Let's get him out early. I mm -hmm. could see that happening for Wes. I, but I also think he's got everything it takes to probably win every single challenge they present to him. Like I could see him, I could see him getting super villain of the week every single week. I don't think so. I don't think he's going to get it every week. I th but I do think he has potential I, to win a lot of them. I don't. I don't think he will. I think he's got the potential to win all of them. Let me say, this. I, I don't think he will, but I think he's got the potential to. I don't. I think Wes is smart in a lot of things and physically challenging in a lot of things. But the way House of Villains is set up, they set it up where a lot of people can win and have potential to win a challenge. Like, I do think Wes will get ganged up on a lot in, in some of these challenges where it's, you know, you have to a uh, knockout round or whatever. But I do think um, he has the potential to win a lot of them. 
I don't think every single week he has the potential to win every last one of them because they're going to be challenges where teams and people are going to come after him. And so he won't have a snowball chance to win those because people will gang up on him. But I do think he has the potential to win because a lot of people don't realize how smart West actually is. That's the point I was trying to make with it is I feel like he is a lot more versatile in his mm-hmm. challenge abilities than Johnny is. I agree with that. I so that's with the that. point. That's the point I was trying to make with that is I just feel like he's got a broader scope of things that he is very, very good at doing when it comes to challenges. As but, we've seen on the challenge. Yes. But we but also those- we also know that these challenges aren't like the challenge challenges. And yeah. they're gonna be stuff like how many people in the house said this? He might not know that. He might not realize who's saying what and how. Or if Johnny he, coached him going in, you know, we, who knows. But I don't think Johnny and Wes are that tight as much as we love to think that, but I don't think they are. But We'll see. I am excited to see Wes in this arena, though. I, I am. It'll be interesting. I'm interesting, but I am shocked that Wes turned down traders to come do this. Yeah. Um, very Smaller shocked. cast, I guess. I guess. But he had potential to be on Traders and he turned it down to do this. And I was like, oh, yeah. interesting. I, you know, I, I would say House of Villains gives you a bit more autonomy in how you do personally as opposed mm-hmm. to Traders. Mm-hmm. So for someone like Wes, I, I understand that for sure. Yeah. Maybe and it's about the same money. amount. Of, it's a guaranteed $200,000 prize as well. Whereas on the Traders, that's not guaranteed. All right. So we'll see. We'll see. Next up, oh dear God, I'm so excited. Teresa Judice from The Real Housewives of New Jersey. This woman is going to cause drama. That this, is what she does. This woman is going to get on my nerves. Yes. I am not a fan of Teresa, Ju- Teresa Judice. I am just not. That, I'm not surprised by that. <laughs> I am just not. She is one of those people who just gets grates my nerves. Like she is that Jersey woman that gets on my last nerves. And I am not a fan. I, I I'm interested to see what she does, but if she, maybe she can turn me around. Like I wasn't a fan of Johnny Bananas going into that and I came out yeah. more of a fan for him than I did right, before. Yeah. So maybe she'll be someone who turns me around. I'm open, but mm. I do like that we're getting Housewives representation on this season because we didn't have any on season one. That's true. So I'm happy that we're we're adding Housewives into the mix, especially because, you know, The Traders is doing that. So there's some other reality shows that are doing that. I think The Goat mm-hmm. has uh, Housewives I'm representation as well. So. I don't remember. I was more focused on Davon, if I'm being 100% honest with you. And Alyssa and Tasha. We'll talk about the cast soon. But... I am very excited for Teresa just to see what Teresa does outside of a housewives kind of thing. And that kind of goes for everyone. I'm excited to see them out of their natural element in this element thrown in with other people that think in a similar way that they do. And Teresa is one of the most iconic villains of the housewives franchise period. Mm -hmm. So I'm interested to see who she gets close to. That's what I'm, that's what I'm most excited to see with Teresa is who is she going to gel with? And who is she not going to gel with? Mm-hmm. And to see, I could see her being an early out just because she um, is going to rub people the wrong way. She's not going to bend for other people in the way that I think some other people with more of a social strategic mind would. Um, I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued and excited. And hey, she looks good in this promo photo. So Ooh. work, Teresa. Good for you, gal. Get your coin, maybe. Who knows? Period. <sighs> Lana, Mr. Pectacular is back on our TV. What the fuck? <laughs> what is um, Jesse doing on our TVs again? I thought I would not have to see Mr. Pectacular after. Big Brother stopped bringing him in for every season to host the veto. And so I was like, oh, finally, we're done with Mr. (sighs) Spectacular. But you know what? I ain't that mad at Jesse being here. 
if you're gonna pick a villain from Big Brother, I think Jesse is one of the best options. He is someone who is going to keep it interesting. Yeah. He's going to Jesse has a way of getting on your nerves and you don't even know why he's like he just weasels his way up. But you his still feet. find you still find him kind of likable. Yeah, kind of charming, kind of like kind of like Johnny Bananas, honestly. Absolutely. Yeah, but it's just something about him. And then he's gonna get he, we we can never go wear a shirt. We're never gonna see him with a shirt. So all hey, the arms. I am not, I'm not been mad at that. I'm not mad in the slightest. I mean, Jesse still looks good. We've this is over ten years. How old is this man? That now? we've seen Jesse on Big Brother. It's been over ten years. It's been over. He's I want thirty seven. So he looks good. So looks I think great. I think Jesse is going to be someone who is. Very much in harm people. Yeah. Um, woo a couple of people, maybe. Um, he was not a bad Big Brother player either. No. Not not the best by any means of the imagination. No. But certainly not a bad Big Brother player. No. I wouldn't put him on the Mount Rushmore of Big Brother players, but I would definitely no. say he is... A very memorable Big Brother player. He's he's in the sure. Big Brother Villains Hall of Fame. I'd give oh. him that. Okay. And you know, it's I I was trying to think also, I was like, who else really would you pull from Big Brother? Because I do appreciate that Big Brother is represented. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I guess the, I wouldn't do Boogie. Not not anymore. Not not in this. Not in this. No. I would do a Will if I would, would I was gonna say not. Dr. Will. I, I would do a Janelle because I think she would be a good oh, house. Sure. I know people wouldn't don't like her, but I think she, a Rachel Riley would be. No, a good I think house Rachel Riley would have been a lovely choice for that. She would be a lovely choice. I think we should, could have a. Uh, I know people won't think he's a villain, but I think he would do really well in House of Villains, and that's Josh Martinez. As I much as people don't really like him, I think yeah. he would be a really would be a really good uh, Danielle Reyes. Oh yeah. Where's Danielle? Eight. I think as well someone someone like Paul Abrahamian would do yes. really well. I think I think they would do fantastic on something like this. Not that not that everyone would consider Paul to be a villain, but a lot of people would consider oh, them to be a would. villain. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. But uh, hey, we got Jesse and you know what? I'm excited to see him shirtless. I, I won't even lie. I'm not I'm not mad at it. <laughs> And speaking of what the actual F, Richard Hatch is here. I mean, look here. Richard Hatch was the very first villain in Survivor. And the very first winner. And the very first winner. I feel like I'm happy to see Richard Hatch here. I think it's... Oh, I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled. It's great to see Richard lean into that. Like, yeah, I was the villain. And yeah, yeah it was over 20, almost 20 years. Almost 20 years. Close to 25 years ago, Lana. Oh, my God. Over 20 years that Richard Hatch was on our TV naked in the waters uh, of... <laughs> I, I love that in his promo... Um, Joel, which we have Joel McHale back. Cool. Yes. I, right. I, I, I found him more palatable on this show than I ever have. I'll be honest. I've always liked Joel McHale, so I was a fan of Joel McHale. I'm, so. up, I'm up and down with Joel. I'll be honest. I'm up and down with him. But um, I love that in the little trailer that they released, he was like, oh, Richard, I didn't recognize you with your clothes on. And so he took them off. <laughs> All right, Mr. Hat. Hey, look I, here. As... as he looks good. good. How old is this man? Richard Hatch looks He's good. He is he is 62 years old. Richard looks good at 62 you years old. You better work, Richard Hatch. Hey, I hey, more gays. Let's go gays. And I'm happy for it. I'm happy to see it. I am intrigued to see how he does here. Mm-hmm. I think Richard's going to do a deep run. I don't think people are going to want to waste, quote unquote, waste their votes 
out their 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 um their villain. Because who thing. else like who, who do you cast? think on the, who do you think on this cast is a fan of Survivor? Wes, but I don't know. Probably the only one. I think that's a lot of people who I think they might shock you who might be a fan of Survivor. But I'm like, did they watch the very first Survivor? That is the question. Exactly. But hey, almost 25 years later, I'm thrilled. I never thought we would get Richard Hatch back. In the same way, I never thought we'd get Jesse back. Right. A lot of these choices, I'm like, oh, they went deep cuts for this one. And I'm I'm thrilled to see Richard here. I think he's the wild card for me. I do mm-hmm. think he could make a very deep run. Mm-hmm. But if someone knows Survivor and knows the game that Richard played, they're going to want to take him out early. Mm-hmm. So. I, I just think that I think people will be like, he's 62. He's not the same Richard Hatch he was on Survivor. Ain't nobody wasting it on him. He's not going to probably win challenges. I'm not about to say that. Mine could still get you. And I, that'll be there to their detriment if they do yeah. that. I agree. I absolutely agree. So, Next up, someone that you probably have no clue who this woman is, Lana. No. So this is Victoria Larson from The Bachelor, a.k.a. Queen Victoria. First of all, um, this is an ugly dress she's wearing. Like It is know. a very ugly dress that she's that wearing. That is the so, most... <laughs> no, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> this is the ugliest effing dress I've ever seen. <laughs> Um, so she is from Matt James's season of The oh. Bachelor. Oh. Um, and then she was on Bachelor in Paradise for a week before she oh. got eliminated. Okay. Um, she is just in the way that Corinne was one of those like very memorable villains from the Bachelor franchise. Mm-hmm. Uh, Victoria is kind of like the modern day Corinne. Mm-hmm. Um, because Corinne was from an earlier, a much earlier season. Um, Victoria just kind of all she really did on her season was stir the pot, cause drama. I think she talked about afterwards that she wasn't even really like that into Matt, and she just kind of wanted to get a spot on Paradise. Um, she rubbed all the girls the wrong way on that season. Mind you, I didn't watch the season, but I did watch, like, the auxiliary stuff about her specifically. I don't care for her, personally. So if she was first boot, I'd be more than okay with that. Um, But she's going to fight. The one thing I know about Miss Victoria Larson is that she is not going to step down to anybody. And so I think I think she'll cause us uh, a little bit of cute drama. I hope that one of our fabulous uh, other women tears her to shreds because I think that'd be very entertaining. I would play beautiful gowns, but no, it's it's not. It's not. So I don't know her. I'll find out, I guess, about her in the show. Hopefully for only one episode. <laughs> or two if they decide not to send anyone home in the first episode again. But, you know, it's fine. Next up, someone I don't know a whole lot about. And I know mm-hmm. you don't either, Lana. Uh, boobs. Uh, this mm-hmm. is Larissa Lima from 90 Day Fiance. A show that neither of us watch. Absolutely. But hey, Anfisa did pretty damn well on season one. So... Mm-hmm. Um, she is most known, and we saw it in the in the teaser trailer that they gave. She's most known for flushing her engagement ring down the toilet. Yep. That's kind of, you know, as far as I'm concerned, that's kind of uh, what she's known for. Um, I would love people in the comments. If you are a 90 Day Fiance fan, uh, please let us know what we need to know about this woman. Because this is like the one the one area that neither of us really know anything about is 90 Day Fiance. But I will say, she looks great. The boobs. Boobs. The dress is cute. 
Mm -hmm. And she's Brazilian, which means she's probably feisty. Or so work, Diva. That's all I have to say about that. I don't know. I don't know anything else about this woman. I don't. I'm gorgeous. I'll, I'll, I'll just be waiting to see what she does. Absolutely. Now, a woman I know a lot about, and I'm so damn happy they got Candy Muse up in this house of villains. If you don't have star quality, then get the fuck out of here. I love her. I love her. I'm rooting for Candy to win. Sorry. I'm biased. There's a lot of people I want to win, but I'm rooting for Candy. I have a feeling you like her. A little bit. Oh, okay. Just a tad. Oh, just, 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 just didn't know. But yeah, Candy Muse is here. I mean, out of all the drag queens on RuPaul's Drag Race, not the one I would have picked, but because oh. I mean, because I'm not a you know I am not a huge Candy Muse fan. I'm not. I, I know you're been. not. I say I I've never been. Not. I'm not. So I wouldn't yeah. have picked her. But sure, Candy's here. I'm interested to see what Candy does. Um, maybe she'll turn my perspective around mm -hmm. in, in a different format, in a different situation where Candy is, you know, is not in the RuPaul drag race sphere. She's so, not, she's the only drag queen in, in this scenario. So. Absolutely. I mean, we, we kind of expect that on these shows now. Yeah. Baby steps. They always pick just one. And, and I'm thrilled that we are getting some. At least we're getting that. So hopefully, yep. as the years go by, we won't have to just get one. It'll be two, yep. three, four different drag queens. But absolutely. I we'll will see. say, I know you don't care for Miss Muse. I know you don't care for her. What I will say, though, is if they were going to pick a villain from Drag Race, it kind of had to be Candy. Sure. And we saw more of her villain side on her original season, which I know you haven't seen, Lana, where her iconic line that I brought up earlier comes from. Um, I'm intrigued to see if she will get second place again, because that's all she's ever placed on a reality TV show. Um, but I, I am excited to see Candy outside of the Drag Race universe. Um, I think a couple of these casting choices with her, I think is going to, you know, potentially give her some insulation. Um, I think she will be very good at making alliances and know who she can trust very early on and who she can't. And I could see her playing a kind of, I mean, we'll talk about her shortly, but I could see her playing a kind of New York style game having a couple allies and kind of building that up as the season goes along. But I'm thrilled. We're getting drag queens everywhere. Yeah. And we that's what I call it. growth. We love to see it. We do. And I mean, this promo look. She looks great. She looks great. She looks great. Except this wig. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't hate the wig. I don't hate the wig, but the wig is a little, it's a little out. It's a little, you could have backcombed a little bit more, girl. But she still looks good. So there's that. <sighs> Lotta. Yes. Camila's back on our TV. I'm so excited. I don't know her. From Bad Girls Club. Watch her. <gasps> oh, okay. I'm very excited for Camila. She is, her and Tanisha are the two most obvious choices from Bad Girls Club if they were going to bring Bad Girls Club contestants on. We got Tanisha season one, we got Camila here. Um, I think, honestly, we're going to get a similar storyline to Tanisha, where she's like, yeah, I was on Bad Girls Club, but I, I'm pretty sure she's a mother now. Mm -hmm. um, and she was always one of my favorites. I always found myself on the side of Camila. 
She did um, All Star Battle, I believe, mm -hmm. as well for a couple of seasons for Bad Girls Club. So she is competitive. Um, I think, I think there's a clear, you know, alliance of three mm -hmm. already kind of set in stone in this, and I think it's Candy, Camila, and uh, another fabulous woman that we'll talk about shortly. Um, and I would personally love to see that. I think you are hoping that that is a set in stone. There's nothing set in stone. I am hoping and praying. I'm hoping and praying. I must say, because I don't know if it's a given that these three people are going to automatically work together. I don't know that it's a given either, but I can hope and dream. Yeah. Hope and dream you can, but just, yeah. I don't think it's set in stone. And I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't, because... Wouldn't be surprised if they didn't either, but... But yeah, I'm excited for Camila. Yeah. Next up, we have Safari from Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, who, again, I don't know all that much about this man. I don't either. <laughs> like, I, I don't know him. I know that he dated Nicki Minaj at some point. Oh. Um, I... I don't watch Love and Hip Hop, unfortunately. Um, mm. So I don't really necessarily know what this man is going to bring to the show. I don't know. I don't know either. He's even in this promo. He seemed very like laid back, kind of. I don't know if his personality is going to be the one that's going to bring the drama. But I do think his personality is probably going to be the kind of personality that he has that will let him like land in the middle for a while. Nobody's really going to be too intimidated or feel like he needs to go right away. But I don't know. Yeah, I think he'll probably be just that person that just sits in the middle until it's time for him to go. I could he'll see that. Fall into an alliance, maybe, but be more than just a number. Yeah, he's also apparently been on all four franchises of Love and Hip Hop. Mm. And he's the only person to do that. Okay, so, good, good for him. Good on you, but yeah, sir. really don't know what he's gonna bring. Interested to see. All right. And last up, New York is back. <laughs> Look who's back. Back, back, back again. Hey, I'm not mad at it at all. <laughs> I am really not mad at it at all. Um, yeah. They said we didn't get all the New York we wanted on season one. So guess what? We're bringing her back for season two. Right. And you know what? I'm mad at it. I ain't mad no. at it at all. I don't know how well she, I don't know if she's going to go further this time. Have she learned her lesson? Or is I don't she, think so. I just think she'll come in just to do what New York does and then get booted out again. Uh -huh. I feel like I'm like, who is she gonna fight with this season? Like Omarosa. I think it's gonna be Teresa. Yeah, I don't know. I hope she tears uh, Victoria apart. That's what I'm hoping <laughs> for. Unless she decides to pull in her bachelor girl like she did on season one. And, you know, we'll see what happens. But, um, but yeah, New York is back. And I'm happy to see it. Right. Because I didn't get enough New York on season one. So. Yeah. It works for me. Yeah. I can't wait to see what she does. I don't know. Yeah. And uh, that's that. So uh, we will be back when the season airs in the fall. But we just wanted to pop in and talk about this cute little cast. And uh, yeah. So thank you for joining us. Make sure to subscribe, like, and share on the way out because we've got a lot of reality TV content 
uh, currently here at the Cup TV, and we've got a lot of content going on weekly across all four of our fabulous, lovely channels. Um, you could also join our membership channel if you so please. So go over and hit the join button over on our main channel or head over to Patreon. Uh, same content, different platform. All of our links are down in the description below. While you're down in the description, you can follow us on our social media at the Cup Pod on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Uh, you can follow me and Lana as well down below. And you can go get your merch, including my Limited 2 Cup mug, down below as well. And with all that being said, cheers. Cheers. Bye, villains. Goodbye, villains. Hey, at least I've got a couple months now to prepare for Joel McHale back on my TV. Absolutely. Mm Mm-hmm.